Here at Simply Garden, with over 50 years of gardening experience, I believe in keeping things simple and productive while gardening in your own backyard. Well, it's a beautiful afternoon in southern New Hampshire here, uh, zone 5. Probably about 60 degrees, 65 degrees out. And uh, checking around things here, we're going to do a few things here like uh, uh, fertilized peas, thin out carrots, I mean spinach that is, and fertilized peas right now. And uh, we'll see what else we see as we go along. But right now that's what the plan is for this afternoon. And I uh, just got done uh, cutting the grass. So um, on to some uh, funner things, which is always the garden. we work on these peas here. I believe these are uh, uh, Lincoln peas. And I'm just going to give it a nice little fertilizing. Uh, yeah, we've got some grass growing in it. We'll get that pulled out in a moment here. Uh, I had some space on the edge of my uh, strawberry beds. Some of these strawberry beds have, uh, are going to be pulled out this year. So as over time, the, the, the uh, planting gets a little thin. So I said, you know what? i got some room on the edge here. i to throw some more peas in. My daughter and grandchildren love peas. I love fresh picked peas. So I said, you know what? Let's, let's put some in here. I'm fertilizing with Ipsoma. I'll give you the numbers a little later on what it is, but uh, just a basic all-purpose organic natural fertilizer. I'm going to go ahead and pull out some of this grass first so it doesn't get involved with the, uh, the roots of the peas too much. I really find you don't have to be too fussy with uh, cultivation with peas. They, they're such a quick crop. Uh, unlike uh, some things you can't allow, you know, weeds the wheat, the to fight them like uh, onions are ones that get fussy with having weeds in the way. Carrots do. Um, beans are pretty, uh, not too fussy with a few weeds in the way, but uh, let these keep it somewhat clean. There we go. And those strawberries, they will fill in nicely next to the peas here. Probably not ideal to put fertilizer next to the uh, strawberries, but like I said, this, this bed's pretty well done as far as productivity. I'm not too worried about affecting a few of the strawberries on the edge of the peas. Uh, they say you don't want to fertilize strawberries when they're blossoming in the spring because it gets the uh, causes the fruit to get a little bit uh, more uh, softer. I'm going to give this good. Cultivation is a light cultivation. You don't want to go too deep and affect the roots down below. And also, um, it's going to rain tomorrow afternoon, they tell us. We'll see how accurate that is. You know how the weather is. But uh, we'll. I don't want to go too close to the uh, strawberries, damage those. There we go. As easy as that. I got uh, six, seven more, six, seven, eight, nine more rows of, of uh, peas to fertilize. Each row is about uh, 13 to 15 feet long, but this doesn't take long at all. You know, you'll see these things really, really jump up. Here's the next uh, row here. Like I guess it's, it's quick and simple. Got a few strawberries still in there, that's okay, we'll leave those alone. And uh, these guys here are um, either uh, marbles or they could be uh, Lincoln again. I'll start on my plot plan, I'll have to check and I'll, I'll list it out when I uh, give the explanation what I'm doing here, exactly what kind of peas these are. That fertilizer pretty much, you know, twice. I'll do it now. I think about five, four or five inches tall. Like those up there can be fertilized again. And then that'll be it for the, uh, for the season. But these are just coming up now. They'll probably be ready to pick, I would say, come middle of July. There we go. 
getting this extra grass out of the way. Where I do do raised beds with the grass along the edge, people have asked questions as I could be up, be up peeing with later on. Um, I don't get so much uh, grass growing into the bed that much because every uh, fall I, I cut back the edge of the uh, bed a little bit and gets mounted back up a little higher. Where it comes the problem is with the strawberries because you're not clipping the edge of the uh, beds as much. So this, the grass does tend to grow into the strawberry beds once in a while. So I have to do a little bit of a, like right here, see where it's coming in. But like I said, this bed's gonna be ripped out. Once these peas are done, uh, it'll be ripped out and uh, we'll probably plant, uh, re recompost it and throw some, some corn in for the, for the fall. There we go. And now the other side. Because I don't step on the soil. It's very, very soft. So okay having a little straw in between there. Peas will push right up and through that. Get my grass here, get out of that. Here we go, that's how easy it is. Now we'll go over and uh, hit this bed here. This is just about where it gets a little too much taller as it gets hard to uh, fertilize something like this because then your, uh, your, your, your hose, your cultivator is getting stuck in between the peas in here. And you start pulling at the uh, plants a little bit. So this is just about the maximum out. I could say six to eight inches. The next thing I'm going to be doing shortly is uh, putting what's called pea brush. And what pea brush is, is basically the trimmings from the uh, Appleton peach trees. Stick the branches in between and the peas can grow up on that. It gives it a nice support. That way the peas don't fall over. It's easier to pick that way too. My, so this is my last fertilizing for these guys here. Fertilized one more time a couple weeks ago. Boy, they jump up. Okay. Here we go. One more uh, row to cultivate down. And uh, a lot different than when it looked like a moment ago. Okay, so I got some of the taller winter rye grass that was left over. Um, one observation we want to notice here is that a lot of the uh, bigger clumps are gone that were in when I turned this thing earlier back in April. A lot's already broken down. I pulled out a few more of the uh, bigger uh, corn husks, corn stalks stuff from before, but uh, this is going to take off nicely now with this nice feeding that came in here. And uh, the fertilizer I'm use is by Garden Tone, and it's organic. And the, uh, the mixture is uh, 344, three parts nitrogen. Uh, four parts potash and four parts phosphorus. Phosphate, that's all natural derivative products uh, from feather meal, pasteurized polar tree manure, bone meal, alfalfa meal, green sand, uh, humidus, sulfate of potash, sulfate of potash, magnesia, all natural uh, things, no chemicals. And that'll really get this thing popping nicely. And, and there we go. All the peas are done. Didn't take long at all. I'm going to come back and I noticed this bed, this row here had a few extra misses in it, so I'm going to throw a few in those, those empty spots right in there. I'll throw a few seeds in. If they catch up, great. If not, it's all right. I'll just be a uh, pull out and put them in the compost bin if they don't make it in time before I need this bed for something else. And actually, what I'll be doing here shortly is I also interplant as the um, gets a little warmer out. I'll go ahead and interplant some sunflowers along the edge here, every uh, 18 inches or so, I'll put sunflowers and this will get me uh, sunflowers for the birds to enjoy and also for cut flowers in the house, the type that are, are beautiful, you know, four to six inch heads and um, the birds love them and also the bees like them for the pollen, so, which is important for the fall. Um, Every little bit helps the bees, hopefully survive the winter. Um, three hives are doing pretty well right now, but uh, 
we should be checking that in about a week and see how they're going to be looking. But for right now, it's, it's a good pollen run. I mean, a nectar run for the bees, the spring blossoms. And, um, but not much in the garden as far as we have nectar yet. Uh, strawberries are coming. They'll enjoy that. But uh, we'll go ahead and say fill in the peas here a little bit. And uh, that pretty much takes care of the peas for the, today. There we go. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 rows of peas. Uh, all cultivated and ready to go for this nice rain we're going to get tomorrow, hopefully. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. And hit the bell so you can get my updates. I try to get to about two in per... Uh, Per day, uh, at least definitely one of what we're doing out here. And continue uh, as it gets busier, more to show you. Uh, have a great night.